This is your Monday Night Raw review for May 6th, 2024 from Hartford, Connecticut, the XL Center. Damian Priest and the Judgment Day down in the ring. J.D. McForehead, Finn Balor, and the Dirty Sanchez mustache, Dominic Mysterio. So he apologizes, Damian does, for the post-match fracas. Last week on Raw says we're united. Balor says since Drew is injured... He gets a first round by in King of the Ring, but General Manager Adam Pierce sands his red Jim Cornette suit because he doesn't want anybody to piss themselves again. Says no, he's facing Jey Uso. And Balor's, of course, the heel. He's angry. This leads into our King of the Ring round one match. Uso wins with a second spear after Drew McIntyre shows up at ringside. Balor didn't really get a ton of offense in, mostly. You know, here and there spots. Jay was in control, and that's to be expected. They're giving Jay the push. They're not doing anything with Balor. Uso wins, moves on to the second round as he powdered before Drew was able to get in the ring. That takes us to a backstage promo with Drew and Adam Pierce. Of course, Drew McIntyre is complaining to Pierce about medical clearances. He gets in his car and leaves, and as soon as he pulls out, just by happenstance, of course, CM Punk shows up. He says, hit my music. Heads to the ring, cuts a promo, basically, you know, putting over the, the deal with Drew, that angle, which it's kind of funny. Both guys are injured and we're still getting promos, which they're still building to this, which I won't fault them for as this is a money program with no belt involved. Queen of the Ring, round one match. We have EO Sky of Damage Control versus Natalia Neidhart. Natalia, of course, only there to put over other talent at this point. EO Sky wins with a moonsault in a very boring match. And that led to Dakota Kai cutting a worthless promo that I could have done without. Shut up, bitch! Match three is a King of the Ring round one match. Ilya Dragunov making his Raw debut against Ricochet. Fast-paced match, a lot of back and forth. Dragunov very hard hitting. This is the first time I've ever seen Ilya Dragunov in action. And I, I have to say I was impressed with him. He wins after hitting his H-bomb. And they have a nice mutual show of respect post-match. My first impression is drag of Ilya Dragunov, I said. Uh, he's very good. Uh, solid in-ring performer. The crowd seems to like him. But he's small. He's built, but he's small. I think he weighs like 210 pounds. I mean, I'm 215 right now, nowhere near as built, but I, I mean, this is just not good. You, these guys are going for King of the Ring, which is, you know, a main event type thing. You know, you want a, a title push, but I mean, you've got these lightweights. <laughs> just doesn't make sense. I mean, Ricochet's only 207, and these guys are small. We wish to welcome you to much Match number four in the card, Queen of the Ring round one match, Zoe Stark versus Ivy Nile. Now, visually the most impressive uh, women's match on the card, but the crowd sat on their fucking hands. The girls' corner spots were way too long to get their footing and to line everything up. Zoe's finisher is pretty dope. Stark advances in the Queen of the Ring tournament. And we're going to talk more about these women's matches later. We have one more to go. But we go next to a backstage promo with the Judgment Day and Carlito. Carlito asks Judgment Day for help against the LWO. Damian Priest, of course, still has beef with Carlito over their match in Puerto Rico last year. So that is a no-go. He tells Dom, get him out of here. Uh, another in-ring promo. Becky Lynch, Michael Cole interview segment. I just have to ask. Now, Becky Lynch is a draw, right? She's been around for a while. She's one of the four horsewomen. I'm not a huge fan. I'm not taking anything away from her. She's a solid worker in the ring. But why do we accept any wrestler, male or female, in the ring wearing fucking tennis shoes? Why? 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 I mean, my God, if you're coming down for an interview segment and you're going to be involved in some physicality and you don't feel comfortable in dress shoes or as a lady heels... Where are your wrestling boots? It is just mind-boggling to me that the biggest company in the world and they're wearing tennis shoes in the fucking ring. I can understand if you do like a run-in, but this is a scheduled segment. 
So Cole, just it's softball type stuff to build up to Liv Morgan making your way down. The one thing of note before Liv came out was Becky Lynch's ridiculous Kentucky Derby outfit, but it's the Kentucky Derby and the hats are always big, stupid, and ridiculous. Um, I, if I offend any Kentucky Derby fans, I don't care. Uh, Liv Morgan interrupts, and thank God, because I can't stand to listen to Becky talk. Uh, damage Control interrupt, and Liv and Becky, a show of solidarity as Damage Control surrounds the ring, and then Liv powders and says, not my problem, and Becky takes some heat from Damage Control. And this leads into match number five, another Queen of the Ring round one match, Lyra Valkyria versus Dakota Kai. Uh, Lyra making her debut. She came down to save Becky from the uh, attack from damage control. So now she's got to wrestle Dakota Kai. During this match, it's so exciting, they cut away to a picture-in-picture -picture trailer for Planet of the Apes. Uh, the crowd, again, on their hands for this match. There was a lot of miscommunications between them, some bad-looking spots, and an incredibly... I, I, I just think it was a weak finish, and Lyra went over... And she advances in Queen of the Ring. Uh, another debuting talent here from NXT that got picked in the draft. Lyra Valkyria. A lot of potential there, but right now, just, yeah, not, not moving the crowd at all. Not moving the needle, as it were. Match number six, main event, Gunther versus Sheamus. And this was a hard-hitting match. Uh, you got the Celtic Cross out of Sheamus. Sheamus looks like he's getting back into shape very quickly, which is going to play into his favor moving forward. Uh, not saying that they're going to do a lot of big things with him, but I think he fits nicely into a Randy Orton role where he's just looking to help get guys over and, you know, win a match every now and then, whereas Orton will obviously win more matches. He's higher up on the card. But Gunther wins by submission as he was targeting the knee of Sheamus. Uh, good match, not overbooked. Gunther advances in the King of the Ring. Oh yeah, and if you're wondering why I haven't talked about the Chad Gable versus Bronson Reed match, because it was thrown out after a homeless Intercontinental Champion attacked. And can we stop pretending that Pygmies are capable of beating a Goliath? I, please, can we stop this? Can we stop this nonsense? And WWE is not as guilty of this as the other company uh, that can't draw uh, 4,000 people in an 18,000-seat arena. And I'm not talking about WWE. I'm talking about the shit show that is AEW right now. But let's talk some women's wrestling. Can we stop thinking that every single thing the men have the women need? We don't need a Queen of the Ring tournament. We never did. We don't need a women's Royal Rumble. We don't need a women's Elimination Chamber match. That is is a stupid idea. It is stupid. You make the Women's Royal Rumble when you got five women in that match that actually draw a fucking dime. And the rest of them don't draw shit. They all look the same. They're all cut from the same cloth. There's a couple that stand out. One of them is Charlotte Flair. And you can say what you want about her. She's one of the best pure female wrestlers they have. She's over. She's got a gimmick. And is it because of who her father is? Some of it. But the talent speaks for itself. Her drawing ability speaks for itself. Yeah, she's injured right now. How much longer does she have left? Who knows? But she is still a viable financial draw. Rhea Ripley's above her because Rhea is younger I would say she's, you know, she's taken less injuries overall thus far throughout her career. But she's, when she's healthy, top five in the company uh, for overall superstars. And, and again, financial viability. She's got a look. She's got a gimmick. She is, everybody loves mommy. Everybody loves mommy. And mommy draws money. Okay. So you got Charlotte. You got Rhea. You got Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch been with the company a long time, one of the original four horse women, along with Charlotte and Bailey and Sasha. And we'll get to those two later. One of them works for the other shit company, so we're not going to talk about her because it's a waste of time. But Becky Lynch draws money. I'm not a Becky Lynch fan, but Becky Lynch draws money. She's got the name recognition. She just released a book, multiple time women's champion. 
She's part of a wrestling power couple, like Seth Rollins or not. I don't, but he's a draw. She's a draw, okay? She's number three. Then you got Bianca Belair. Bianca Belair has every physical attribute that a female worker needs. She's got a amazing physique. She has amazing athleticism. She's got power. She can pull off the, you know, quick, fast-paced style. She's got good technical ability. Over as fuck with the crowd. What? She's a draw. She's a financial draw. Jade Cargill's another one, okay? Now, Jade Cargill's in ring ability is suspect. It absolutely is. It has been. Has she improved? A little bit. Is she is she where she should be after what? 5 6 years now? No. No, she's not. Hopefully because this the window of viability in the ring is closing, okay? If it doesn't work out soon, it might be time to consider acting because God knows this woman has the body and look to play Storm in the X-Men. <laughs> I swear to God. Not that I'm watching any of that Disney bullshit anymore, but she looks like the comic book character. Jade has the same same things as Bianca as far as the aesthetics go. Personality-wise, still a little dry for a baby face, you know. Uh, but she's over. The crowd loves Jade. Uh, and you put Jade and Bianca together, and aesthetically, athletically, you've got a fucking amazing tag team. Now, three quarters of that is carried by Bianca. But Jade is a draw because Jade has a look. Jade has presence. She can draw money. Who isn't drawing money is, you know, Chelsea Green, Indy Hartwell. Uh, these these little carbon copy. I forgot Liv Morgan. But Liv Morgan, I mean... I, 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 I'll put her right outside the top right now. Bailey's another one. Bailey can draw money. I, I don't like her, but she has a fan base. She's been there. She has an established fan base. Her in-ring work and is not that solid anymore. It's not. But you put somebody above her, and that's Tiffany Stratton. Tiffany Stratton has, she looks like, she's like an athletic, muscular Barbie. That's Tiffany Stratton. And again, all the wrestling acumen in the world for having been in the business for like, what, two, three years? These women are women that can draw money. You know, you, you put, and I'm not saying I don't like them, but I, I love, uh, aesthetically anyways, Zoe Stark and Ivy now. I think they're both fine as hell. I'm not going to hate on a muscle mommy. Not at all. But their match the other night on Raw, the crowd sat on their hands. Same EO Sky. EO Sky's got, you know, she's got some support, but she's a heel. And what you're not, she's not a draw. I'm sorry. Not a draw. She's not drawing money. It's not happening. And this intergender thing, you know, we, we talk about the women who can draw money. There's, like I said, five, six, seven tops that can really draw money. And out of those seven, there's really four or five that are your solid ones that could really draw. You know, the other two are kind of, eh, you know, but intergender matches. And this is, this is another thing. This is absolute garbage. And it just needs to stop because you're telling me going back to Tessa Blanchard and Sammy Callahan, WWE doesn't do this as much, but the women's wrestling, and this is some indie rific shit right here, because you see these promoters, they'll only pay one woman because for some reason, uh, a woman on the indies is worth more money just because she's a woman. Not, not, not even talking about her work. You know, just because she's a woman. So they'll pair a woman with a guy and they'll put the woman over because reasons. Because, oh my godsies. No. No, no, no. Stop. Stop. And stop putting this shit on TV. And God love Jordan Grace. Like I said, she's another man. A little, little ball of muscle. But... She's not going over Matt Cardona. She's not going over Brian Cage. She's not going over Bully Ray. Please shut the fuck up. Please shut the fuck up and spare me the stupidity and the brain rot. And stop having these bitches hit guys outside the ring and not let the guy retaliate. Because if a bitch comes up and kicks me in the head, I'm laying her the fuck out. I don't care. I'm laying her the fuck out. Bottom line. It's fucking stupid. It never benefits the man. It always benefits the female. And 
they're not drawing money, so what the fuck good is that? You're shitting on the, the dudes because you want to look progressive in the eyes of your other fucking, the little soy boys on the indies, or what the fuck are you doing? Like, what are you doing? It's stupid. There, I'm done ranting. That's my raw review for this week, folks. We'll be back with the SmackDown review. I'm Etepo Kui, and from the place to be reviews, I've been here with all these. If I don't see you, have a great day. Plus, tomorrow, I'll catch you on the next one. And remember, it's always better to burn out than fade away or job out to a 120-pound woman.